Now firmly slide the cover back to close the case. Once you have the cover on the case, replace the four screws removed in Chapter 3. Let's go to the back of the case to connect the other components. We know these core connectors of the motherboard from Chapter 7. Securing the motherboard. First I connect the mouse, the green PS2 connector, to the right port and the keyboard to the left port. If you mix them up, it will cause a keyboard failure error when you turn on the computer. If that happens, simply switch the connectors. These are the USB ports for USB devices. Here are the serial ports used with an external modem. Next to them is the parallel port that can be used for printers, zip drives, and other parallel devices. Into the video card port, I plug in the monitor connector. It is a 15-pin D-shell, three-row connector that will go in one way and should not be forced. Then I'll insert the network cable connector into the network port jack. Into the sound card, I'll plug the speaker jack connector in the speaker port. The connection is a normal mini stereo plug. The line jack is for connecting music sources such as tape players, stereos, and musical instruments. The mic jack allows you to record your voice into the PC. The 15-pin connector connects to a joystick. Finally, we can plug in the power cord to the power supply and plug the free end into a wall socket. The little switch next to it should be set to 115 volts in the United States. And that is how the back of your computer case should look if you used the same type of components I did. After you plug your system into a wall socket, you can start to install the software. For more information, consult our text file window, Installation of the Software. If you have any difficulties and you need to troubleshoot, just go over the installation process step by step and you should be able to figure out the problem. Congratulations! You built your own PC.